I don't have an outtakes reel, but we can pretend this is one. Low effort intro. Hey there, and welcome to my channel and my messy home office. Today we're gonna take a look at my home automation, specifically one part of it, the bedroom humidifier setup. It's overcomplicated and it's fun. It's still a while before I can continue my flight lessons due to the weather there. And the airport I go to is outside this uh, Uusima area, which the government is probably gonna put under lockdown for obvious reasons. So I probably can't access the airfield where I do my training in a while. Today we're taking a look at my bedroom's humidifier setup, which is uh, basically a bucket with a heater element and some protection. It keeps the humidity right bang in the butter zone for humans without the wallpapers coming off the walls. This is Finnish made Uvox U3S air humidifier, which is basically a glorified bucket with a heater element and uh, some protection for when the water runs out that it doesn't melt through the floor. It is just a vat of water uh, and a heater. It is connected to a smart Wi-Fi connected outlet. Basically just turns the humidifier on and off. The second half is the sensor on top of the door. This thing here, this is Ruvitag. It's a small battery powered air quality sensor which smells things like temperature, air moisture, air pressure and whatnot with high precision. The sensor here is connected wirelessly via Bluetooth to the Home Assistant home automation server, which then controls the Wi-Fi smart outlet, which turns the heater in the humidifier on and off. The feedback loop between the actuator and the sensor on the wall allows me to keep the air moisture in the bedroom quite stable. I can use the Google Home Hub here to turn it on and off, and that just keeps the bedroom humidity solid. It also tells you the current humidity here. So basically I have a tab here for all the air quality kind of measurements. It has my sauna temperature which is also measured by a Ruvitag. And it has the humidifier values. Here you can see the oscillations uh, during the night time. The code that I'm running here right now tries to keep the bedroom humidity between the 42 and a half and uh, 46, was it 45 percent? The bedroom temperature seems quite stable except the small spike there from handling the sensor a moment ago. But the bedroom humidity is the interesting one. Air in the Finland in the heated apartments gets really dry during the winter. So, have to have a humidifier or you just die. This is the automation that turns the humidifier on and off, which I call the hydrostat. It's basically listening for the bedroom humidity sensor if it uh, clicks above uh, 45% or under 43.4% or the uh, automation state changes. And that is so I can click the humidifier on just by enabling the hydrostat, so I don't need to click two buttons. There are no conditions and the actions are there. Don't be afraid, this is just some code. It's quite simple. You can easily find instructions how to do this online. But uh, this, what this code does, uh, it controls the switch called humidifier. It either turns it off or on. And this is based on the sensor value that is read from the Bluetooth sensor. So if the value is more or equal than 45, turn it off. If it's less than the set lower value, turn it on. That's all there is to it and it works like a charm. I have two sensors here, or switches. This one is the actual smart socket. It can be turned on and off. 
And then there's this automation I have named Hydrostat, which then controls this on and off. Currently, you can see it's on full power. And this is actually measured from the current the humidifier is taking. So if the uh, smart outlet thing senses about 300 watts of power being taken, it will say full power. Currently the apparent power at the smart outlet is about 150 watts, so the system senses it's on half power. There is also a third state, which is water empty. And that is uh, when the smart outlet is on, but the humidifier is not taking any current. Under automations, I have the humidifier notification, which does the following. If the humidifier has run out of water, the status is water empty, and it has been that for five minutes, then do something. Send a notification what time the water has ended. This is how it looks on my phone. Focus, you fuck. And uh, show a notification on my smart TV. I have a small Raspberry Pi 4 computer running under my bed, generating some heat. It's currently running Ubuntu and the latest version of Home Assistant. I found that to be the best as I can code and it's highly customizable. It's also maintained by the hobbyists, so if there's a new gadget coming to market, there's already probably support for it. For example, I bought the automatic roller curtain from IKEA when the IKEA uh, released the product in Finland uh, and Home Assistant already had support for it, which is like... <laughs> Actually, the Ruvitag sensor was something that the Home Assistant didn't support out of the box but there were Python libraries for it, so it took me like a few hours to get it running. So I managed to read data out of Bluetooth, beacon air sensor thingies, and get actual quite good quality data on my home assistant. Probably the worst part about having a home automation system as your kind of hobby is that no one cares. You don't have any friends who give a shit, have a spouse who gives a shit, and it's mostly annoying for the other people when there's no light switch in the wall they can push. Everything is automated that can be automated or should not be automated. At least here in YouTube we have a small community of people creating smart home things and hacking gadgets and doing all kinds of cool stuff with their time and money. Anyways, if you like the video, you know the thing you can do, and uh, if you have any questions about my setup or in general about home automation, you can drop them in the, the comments below. I can try to answer the best I can. Until the next episode.